Hello everyone, welcome back to Ray's Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2, where I introduce my completely failed attempt to make a rocket sled in this game and ask for help, basically. Uh, so you, you can help me on this one. But it's a difficult thing to do. The goal is that we will eventually mount some payload on top and this will accelerate it as quickly as possible uh, while still maintaining its ability to decelerate. We'll probably need drag chutes as well. Uh, but then release the payload so that the payload can then continue on. Uh, it's not a good idea. It was uh, the it was used in some designs, especially in the 50s, uh, though never practically speaking. And uh, I think the Orion carrier plane from 2001: A Space Odyssey it uh, it didn't appear in the movie, but it was conceptualized for the movie. Uh, would have been launched with a rocket sled as well. So, yeah, it's a thought people have had, but it's not easy to do. So what we have here are mammoth engines in the back, and then we are using the launch escape towers as our retro burn devices because they have very short duration and high thrust, which is what we want. The only other thing like that is the Separatron. If you use one of the solid fuel boosters, uh, you're carrying extra mass with that, and they don't give you that much thrust. The, bottle rocket, the launch escape system, gives you 750 kilonewtons for one ton of mass. And of course, we, we don't really care. It's gonna take very short time, hopefully, otherwise it'll overrun the ramp here. Uh, but other than that, you know, this is only 192 kilonewtons for 1.5 tons. You could reduce the solid fuel, but still, ultimately, it's better probably to t carry the bottle rockets, I think. Maybe, maybe not. It's a close call in some cases. Anyway, uh, for instance, for this one, the dry mass of the kickback, which has less thrust than the launch escape system, uh, is 4.5 tons. So even if you dumped all the solid fuel, it wouldn't be worth it. So anyway, I put the launch escape systems as our retro burn rockets, but we never get to that point. There are a lot of complications with this. First of all, a vessel doesn't collide with itself. So we, we've mounted the whole thing on these docking ports here, and you know how wonderful docking ports are. Uh, so eventually we're going to have to release it onto the ramp and then fire the engines. But if we just did, if we just had this and brought it outside to the runway, I know I tried this, uh, what would happen is it would hang on that docking port and then tilt down. Uh, it would, the whole thing sort of clips into this, and then if you release it, of course, it all explodes. So we have to have the launch clamps, which means the launch clamps have to release at the same time as the docking port. And so we have that as custom uh, action group one. So that is what that's doing there. So that's one complication. <laughs> uh, another complication is the whole nose cone tends to explode. We actually have two controllers on here because I fully expect to lose the first one. As you might imagine, making the ramp is messy. Uh, for instance, if you try to add more of these plates to the top, um, let me just copy. Sometimes they go the way you want. Other times they do not. I could probably extend it there. Maybe I should. The trusses don't seem to prevent this from clipping through them consistently. At least I've had some issues with that. Anyway, let's bring it outside and I'll show you what happens. I mean... From the start, uh, we're pointing in the wrong direction, but uh, from the start, it's not too bad, right? I mean, look, it's actually not blowing up. Wow, we're losing light quickly, aren't we? Okay, and then when we release, it still doesn't blow up, which is great. And then, let's say, we do this. It, it, it lasts for a fraction of a second before blowing up, which is a, an incredible achievement, really. <laughs> but, I mean, think about all the other things that we've brought out to the pad in KSP2. Um, and consider the enormity of this. I think maybe I should have wheels on it. Would wheels help? Because then it'll be rolling on it. But then the, they have a limited velocity too. It's actually amazing that these little thing jigs, I don't know what they're called, uh, those M-beams, uh, actually do hold the big rocket boosters to this thing. That's fascinating and probably worth noting for future reference for your structural stability needs, by the way.
Well, it has the benefit of not having been tried. Let's see. Oh, I should turn it around and maybe time warp to morning. Okay, I've turned it around, but this is sort of dodgy. Um, I'd make the whole thing longer if I had, you know, something that allowed me to stretch the VAB in that direction. Okay, we're pointing in the right direction, it's daylight. So, yeah, um, I'm only doing this as a curiosity on the assumption that people haven't accomplished it yet. If somebody's accomplished it, tell me I'll do something else interesting. Uh, okay, so... separation. Oh, I don't think the landing gear worked very well. That backfired. No kidding. So, maybe I'll raise the landing gear a little bit more. Maybe it's clipping into the platform too much. It doesn't seem like it's clipping in. There are these guide things. Uh, I might need to set them lower. I don't know if they're a good idea or maybe I should use wheels for that too. But so far the wheels have not been friendly to me. Oh, weeks in the wrong way. Okay. And we can reduce the suspension stuff. Or increase the suspension stuff. The docking port's already sort of off, isn't it? Which is suspicious. I didn't tell it to do that. Okay, but... Oh, wait. Maybe... maybe no, it's, it's glitching out crazy. So, yeah. The landing gear makes things worse, basically. <laughs> is, the, is the point. Um, there ought to be a way of doing this, but maybe not in this version of the game. Uh, but if somebody else has done already, tell me. But we've got so many glitchy elements. The landing gear tends to be glitchy and randomly explodes my heavy dropship. The docking ports tend to be iffy when things decouple from them. And, uh, well, structurally speaking, this was going to be difficult to begin with. So, anyway, that's the idea. Of course, we have launch clamps that don't decouple on launch. We only decouple the four on the side of the thing. The other launch clamps hold the ramp. And they do a nice job, but let's one more time take a look at the non-landing gear version of it, just to verify that it still gets to one second after igniting the engines before exploding. I don't know, maybe pointing this way around is better. Is there, is that a thing? Uh, even with this version, the docking ports already have sort of a non-existent grasp of each other. But it sort of sits like that, and here it sits fine. Maybe somehow the way I placed the landing gear is a little bit iffy. Let me try a lower thrust setting. Of course we want it to be full thrust, otherwise it won't give the acceleration it needs to the... the vehicle that we're trying to launch, but, you know. Let's say... 30%, just for test purposes. Well, it knocked off our docking port, and it doesn't seem to overcome friction. You can see how the top controller and nose cone are uh, slightly overcoming friction. How they're sort of wanting to do something different, <laughs> basically. The stuttering. It's breaking the ramp a bit. I'll, I'll throttle up a bit. Ooh, and that's it. I want to see what happens when we retrofire the launch escape systems. We could strut the, these panels to each other, but I don't think they're the main... I mean, eventually, if we're going fast enough on this tank, it's got to take the impact tolerance of that tank as the number in question, right? That if we go faster than 12 meters per second or whatever the impact tolerance of the tank is, we're going to explode. Well, okay, we explode a little bit earlier there. Let me try again, but maybe I should roll back to VAB and try it. Uh, so that's why we want the landing gear on. Unfortunately, the landing gear doesn't want to cooperate. But if there's a certain placement tweak that might be more preferable, then we could do that. Okay, this time it was okay. Let's try 20... No, let's try 25 again. Or 27, fine.
Well. Okay, retrofire. Well, it wasn't exactly how I envisioned it, let's face it. Well, YOLO. <laughs> okay, it's definitely not going well. This is not my normal kind of thing to do. And... I think I might create one in... KSP1. A custom one that will work better. Just for amusement. Well, not just for amusement. We could try to launch the Orion carry plane like that. But, you know... In case we want, I could make something a kilometer long without any problems, in theory. So, yeah. But anyway, that was my, my first attempt to conceptualize a rocket sled. There are many things that could be going wrong with this. Maybe I should start smaller. That's a thought. I think the retro burn with the launch escape... But then again, there was also friction to work. Well, how would that work out? Anyway, I'll leave it here. It's just a curiosity. With that, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.